Hi, my name is Marcus and welcome to Servant King Unraveled. This program is called To Be or Not To Be. You've probably heard that saying before. I think William Shakespeare wrote that. In the last program, I hope uh, I made it clear enough or was able to explain it well enough that when you do not do the will of God, when you don't do the will of your Father, you supersede him. You, you exalt yourself above his power and authority. So in hierarchy and chain of command, you're higher than God, which means you make God of none effect. You reject him. So if you're a member of any country, in any country in the world at all, doesn't matter what type of government you have, you've rejected God. You've placed yourself above him. And of course, what happens in reality, because we have to have law, is we end up debasing ourselves when we were at a certain birthright, if you like, a servant king. And um, so everything backfires. Our servant, because we became something that we're not in reality, our servants become our master. Sort of like a cruel hoax God's playing back on us. So when I say you can't get around the law of God, the will of God, believe me, you cannot get around the will of God. And the people that run this world know this, but you're not supposed to know this. So this next program, we're going to look at how this comes about. What, what do we actually do in practice, which we think is so normal, which we defend and think is great until you understand what it's really about. So we're going to be looking at two things. If you remember, I said in the, um, um, I think it was the Introduction to Mind program, um, or Confusion to Mind program, I said, you have to know the original. You have to be able to see the original. In other words, you have to be able to see the original creation. You have to be able to see reality in order to recognize a forgery. Everyone's working on the forgery, on the forgery, trying to, doesn't work like that. You have to be able to compare the two. You cannot see what is wrong until you see the original. Okay, so when I said this guy had a beautiful treasure and showed it to me, I said, well, it's a forgery. And he goes, how do you know? It looks beautiful. I said, because well, I've seen the real one, the original. So that's why we always go to the original or source of things, the cause of the effect, okay? So this program's called To Be or Not To Be, which is really a silly thought. Because you can never be anything other than what you really are. I'll be a frog, you'll be the prince. Well, that's not reality, that's pretending, that's uh, acting, a role. That's not real. So that's probably the most deceptive question you've ever been asked. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, the only logical answer to that is bigger. I think I'll get bigger when I grow up. So maybe I should call this program to take a part or not to take a part, because in reality, that's what's going on here. So that would be a better question. Why? Because you never can be part of anything other than what you are a part of. And we all are part of something. Can you take a part or hold a part of something, but not be part of it? Yes, that you can do. That's against the law, but we do do that. All this has to do with one word, and that word is, what is your constitution? And we're going to explore that thoroughly. I told you in the confusion of mind and confusion of voice programs, uh, or the confusion of voice or words program, I told you that these programs are more important than the specifics of the swindle, because they are the means used to accomplish the swindle. Now, being aware of this tool, of this deception, I will use the same tool to unravel the confusion. Rather than use different words to confuse and deceive you into seeing the wrong thing, I will be using one set of words so that you will see the right thing. Here's an example. If I say, God, Master, King, you will see three different things. God, you will see God, the man with the white hair and the beard in the sky, remember? <laughs> if I say master, you will see a guy who is a boss over someone else, a master. If I say king, you'll see a guy wearing a crown, like a monarch of a country. But if I say we will only use the word father, you will see the head of a family, a father, a progenitor, a, um, who, who generates to create. 
And if I say only family instead of country, nation, society, corporation, you will see a group of people that are all related as a family. So we will be using these words, or at least relate everything to these words. Family, father, son, property, identity. I may use a few other words, but basically we're, we're going to stick to that. I said I would begin the unraveling with the word the. The most important word in the law, and unravel it until we come to the solution. Well, that's sort of what I'm going to do. You see, I figured out things through words. I actually discovered things through words. And of course, the words of God are the most important, because without them, there would be nothing to discover. There would be nothing. Everything was created by the word of God. And the written word revealed to us is a means to communicate to us things we don't know. They're revealed. We have no way of knowing them. In Noah Webster's uh, first dictionary, he says, um, he, he, which was the first attempt to define all English words. I don't know if you know that or not. What did he use? He used the scripture. He kept referring to the scripture to arrive at the real meaning of a word. Because all words are of God. <laughs> at least their true meaning. Not their dark meaning. He says, no man can claim to be educated without knowing the scripture, the word of God. So my discoveries came from looking at the words of God and also the words of man. I looked at how both systems work, the law and our legal system. I looked at both the good and the evil and, of course, what is right and wrong. One day I see this word. Thearchy. And I'm looking at that closely and it says it's a noun it's, and it comes from the Greek meaning God and rule. Government by God, more commonly called theocracy. Now, I looked at that and I went, the, the rule, the archy, thearchy. So the means God. And uh, the is probably the most overlooked word in the world. We just say the this and the, the apple, the, the man, the, the wind. And the is defined as the definite article. The in Greek, and that's how it's written in Greek, which means theos, which is God. So the is God. I thought, wow. But why is that word God? The rules, the rules of English grammar require that in most cases a noun, or more generally a noun phrase, must be completed with a determiner to clarify what the referent of the noun phrase is. The most common determiners are the articles the and a, a or an, which specify the presence or absence of definiteness of the noun. This is why the is called the definite article. Other possible determiners include words like this, many, my, each, and so forth. The articles in English are the definite the articles in English are the definite article, and the indefinite articles are a or an, and some and sometimes some. Use, use of the definite article implies that the speaker assumes the listener knows the identity of the noun's referent because it is obvious, because it is common knowledge, or because it was mentioned in the same sentence or an earlier sentence. Use of an indefinite article implies that the speaker assumes the listener does not know the identity of the referent. So if God is the, the definite noun, then, or article, then a or an are all from the, as in, here is a sheep, a sheep, one of the sheep. So I thought about this. Without the, there is nothing. The makes it definite. If nothing existed, if nothing existed, there would be no the anything. <laughs> Everything comes from something. Everything has a cause. So the is the definite. All of the creation is the present of the. And the is the cause of all the other thes or a's. 
a this, a that. Things that exist. So, the apple, the land, the man, is really God's apple, God's land, God's man. Use of the definite article implies that the speaker assumes the listener knows the identity of the nouns referent, because it is obvious, because it is common knowledge, or because it was mentioned in the same sentence or an earlier sentence. An earlier sentence would be, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. After this statement, everything is just the, whatever it is. God simply says the land will enjoy her Sabbath, not this land, my land, each land, or many land, just the land. The is the determiner of how everything will be. Determined means to end and fix, to settle ultimately, to fix on, to settle or establish, to end, to limit, to bound, to bound, to confine, fix conclusively and authoritatively. Sort of makes sense, doesn't it? The. Without the infinite first cause, the, there is the nothing, nothing else, the. Definite article. You see, before the beginning, God had no identity. An identity is sameness of being. And we're going to explore that totally in the next program. God is God and there is none other. He says, I am God alone. We will learn in the next program that identity is the relation that a thing bears just to itself. That's the definition of identity. Hence, God says, I am that I am. The. No identity. I have no sameness. Well, not before creation anyways. There is only the, the definite. So God made his identity, his relation, known through his works and his words. And his identity is revealed to us through his works and his words. They represent God. They represent the definiteness of God. The word the is pretty important. Without this definiteness, the anything would be nothing. <laughs> Theology starts with the again, which means God and discourse. This is God speaking to us. Divinity, the science of God and divine things. Divine means to emanate from God. Or the science which teaches the existence, character, and attributes of God, his laws and government. The doctrines we are to believe and the duties we are to practice. Theology, that's the study of the, okay, the ology, consists of two branches, natural and revealed. Natural theology is the knowledge we have of God from his works by the light of nature and reason. Do you remember what I said? I said most of the law you can just observe. His works. It's law. It's constitution, as we'll see shortly. And revealed theology is that which is, which is to be learned only from revelation, the written word of God. These are things we couldn't possibly observe or know based on the creation his works. Theism, the-ism. See, it always starts with the. The belief or knowledge of the existence of God as opposed to atheism. Now, theism differs from deism. A lot of people go wrong here. They don't know this. Theism differs from deism. For although deism implies a belief in the existence of a God, a God, yet it signifies in modern usage a denial of revelation, which theism does not. You see, theism is the God, the belief in the God. Deism is the belief in a God, totally different. Theist, one who believes in the existence of God, the God. Theocracy means the God, power, to hold power. 
government of a state by the immediate direction of God. So a theocracy is a government of a state, a condition, a group of people, by the immediate direction of God, or the state thus governed. Of this species, the Israelites furnish an illustrious example. The theocracy lasted till the time of Saul. If you think God's always ruled over this earth, he hasn't. People don't obey him. Theocratic. Starts with the again. Theocratic. Pertaining to theocracy, administered by the immediate direction of God, as the theocratical state of the Israelites. The government of the Israelites was theocratic. So we either do the will of God or we do democratic, pertaining to a democracy administered by the immediate direction of the people. So here the people are God, and of course your democracy is as one because we can't all be individually gods. And the one being a sovereign God, which makes it a theocracy, because there is nothing else. In other words, in your country you have a supreme being. There is a supreme being. It's not a real being. It's done through images. But there's a supreme being, and it's under, you're under, as a member of the country, you're under the immediate direction and rule of this one. That makes it a theocracy. Don't be fooled. We well, see, we use different words. So the common good is a theocracy. The public interest is a theocracy. The public domain is a theocracy. I will be your God, and you will be my people, says God. And we say, no, we will be our own God as one. The one theocracy. So we are back to the will of God or the will of the people. You see how simple life is? But of course, when we fall to property, as we learned in earlier programs, we know our will has to be unlawful, illegal, wrong, immoral unjust enrichment. So all things so all things are the whatever it may be. Or things can be as the. <laughs> you can be as gods. Be as is a oxymoron. You cannot be and also be as. It's not possible. So as means like or similar. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. As is or like that. As is or like that. Do you want to buy this as is? Don't ask any questions, just take it. Take it or leave it, as is. Or like that. The second commandment of God forbids like that. Anything that is, anything like that is unconstitutional. And we'll learn that as we go. Let's see if we can get a feel for these words now. Um, I didn't put them in there. These words, constitution, law, being, exist. Four words, constitution, law, being, exist. If we can grasp the essence of what these words mean, you'll start to see things more clearly. What is a constitution? It's the state of being. That form of being or particular structure and connection of parts which makes or characterizes a system or body. The state of being, that form of being, like the constitution of water. What is the constitution of water? Two hydrogens, one oxygen. H2O. That's the constitution. And the hydrogen and the oxygen are constituents of the constitution. Now, do we have the ability to determine our own state of being, our constitution? No. It's impossible. You say somebody has a healthy constitution, it means their makeup, what they is. Hey, what you is. In the scripture it says, does the clay say to the potter, why hast thou made me this way? Why have you constituted me this way? No, you can't do that to your creator, right? Constitute, to set, to fix, to establish, to form or compose, to give formal existence to, to make a thing or being what it is. 
Do we have this ability to make a thing what it is? No. So hey, what it is, we look at its constitution. What is its being or state of being? Its makeup, essentially what it is. Law. Law is defined as that which is laid down or established. They're funny, eh? We think of law as rules. No, rule of law is a little bit different than just law. A law is that which is laid, set, or fixed, like statute or constitution. That's why we say the constitution is the supreme law. I heard a scientist say, every time we test this, we get the same result, approaching a law. In other words, law is something that can't change. So by testing or experiment, you can discover a law. Be like jumping off a cliff and discovering the law of gravity. <laughs> get the same result. Repeatedly getting the same result makes it a law. Just the way it is. Can't change a law. Not a real law. Real law can never change. Like a real constitution cannot change. State. State is fixedness or standing, condition, the circumstances of a being or thing at any given time. Starting to see the similarities amongst these words about being fixed, not being able to move, concrete, firm, set, established, right? So a state can change, a form can also change, a will can also change, but any changes would be unconstitutional and transgress the law. Because law is fixed and set and so is constitution. When you do something that violates those, there's a transgression. You can change your state, you can change your form. You can state, change your state of being or condition. You can change the form you think you are. And maybe you will. But they're all going to be unconstitutional against the law. If there is a constitution and a law. Anytime the state form or will changes, there is a transgression of the law, which means to go beyond the boundary or the limits of what has been set. Because the law cannot change, it is set, fixed, established. All these changes would require a change in constitution, a change of the law, a change of being, and a change of what exists. Being, existing in a certain state, a particular state or condition. If the state changes, so does the being. So state, status, is something that can change, but is it supposed to change? Do we have the ability to change that? Exist. Exist, anytime you see a word starts with E or E-X, it means out of means to be out of. Everything that exists comes out of something. Something that comes out of nothing is nothing. So everything that exists must come from this infinite first cause that Webster was talking about in his dictionary. It's God. The primary sense is to set, fixed, or be fixed. Whence the sense of permanence and continuance no longer exists, then something has happened to change the state, form, will, and so forth. To be, to have an essence or real being, applicable to matter or body or to spiritual substances. A spiritual substance is life. A life is a being. Okay? Webster says, No, Webster says, a supreme being and first cause of all other beings must have existed from eternity, from infiniteness. For no being can have created himself. Now, excuse me, that's just pure logic and reason. You need to keep working these concepts over and over in your mind until you can grasp them, see them and feel them. When you do, you will start to see things that exist, and you will no longer see things that do not exist. <laughs> right now, you will argue till you're blue in the face that something exists that does not exist, because you can only see it in your mind. And do you know that people are dying for these illusions, for this nonsense, this nuttiness, this mental madness God calls it? these vain imaginations. I'm serious, people are dying. When 
There's parents out there that have lost their children or children lost their parents in wars and different stuff. When they, if they see this and learn this, they're going to be mad. I mean, mad, extremely, if they can understand this. Here now is a very misunderstood word. That word is author. Author. What does the word author mean? Author. The primary sense is one who brings or causes to come forth. One who produces, creates, or brings into being. As God is the author of the universe, God is the author of our being. See, we think an author is writing words and stuff like that. No, no, no. Of our being. An author is the beginner, former, or first mover of anything. Mover of anything. Hence, the efficient cause of a thing. We never think of words or an author creating something. They are just words. But words can create promises. Words can do many things. I will be your God and you will be my people. The God and the people. Now I'm going to take you through the real constitution and what a counterfeit constitution is. Some counterfeit beings who all have the likeness of the real constitution. Beings that do not exist. And see if we can, and see if we can together, figure out our state of being and our state of existence. And we'll start at the beginning. Before the beginning, we know from Noah Webster that there was a being, an infinite being, something that existed. A being who has no beginning and no end. Eternal being, the supreme being. The. <laughs> that was before the beginning. And we call that being God. So in the beginning, this was before the beginning. Now, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We're going to go through a real constitution here. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. In the evening and the morning were the first day. So that was the first day of creation. Before that, there was no days. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. A firmament is an expanse or region. See, God is constituting right now, forming things. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So there was water above the, the first firmament that, that we're living in. There was water up above the um, clouds or whatever. And God called the firmament heaven. Hmm. So where we are right now, I'm in heaven. Da, 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 da. Never thought you'd get some entertainment today, did you? I'm in heaven right now. But of course, we're living in hell. It's an illusion. We're in heaven right now. We're in the first heaven, the first uh, firmament, the first expanse. There's a difference between being in heaven and being in the grave, okay? We'll learn that as we go. And God called the first firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and the dry land appeared, and it was so. Now we had seas and oceans. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathered, and the gathered together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Now we're going into the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So he's setting up a calendar. That's what he's doing. And let them be... Let 
them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give lights upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. He made good stuff, God. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, and God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the firmament of heaven. See? Told ya. So birds fly in heaven. Go outside, see some birds flying around? They're flying in heaven. So where do you think the first heaven is? Birds fly in it. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw it was good. And God blessed them, so these things are holy, they're blessed, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl fill the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that was good. And you see, the reason he's saying everything is made after its kind is kind can only reproduce kind. There is no evolution. Okay? Can only reproduce after its kind. Same with all the plants. And that's why they are after their kind, a seed within themselves. They can only reproduce the same kind. God made sure nobody would believe this evolution nonsense. Um, and God said, uh, this is what day are we at now? I lost my spot here. It was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So he created both males and females, nothing else. All the stuff about transgender stuff, and the, these are all mutations, okay? God didn't create that stuff. This is... The world. This is all uh, comes about based on sin. Whenever you transgress the law, the Constitution, you will suffer the penalty. Right? These things are not normal. And God blessed them and said, uh, "Okay, we read that over everything of the earth." And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given you every green herb for food, meat. And it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, behold means to see, to observe, to behold. It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And this is the creation and constitution, the true state of being of the heavens and the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. I rewrote that sentence a little bit, the first part. Now go outside and have a look. Go on. I'll wait. Get outside. Have a look. I said, I'll wait. Is this constitution real? Are there birds, bees, flowers in the tree, sky, water, earth, and everything else? Of course it's real. This is your state of being. Now look at yourself. Now don't worry if you don't believe in this God part yet. You know, God created all this stuff. Fine, throw them up the window, reject them. I couldn't care less. We're looking at the effect. Tell me the effect's real. Of course the effect's real. We're only looking at the facts, evidence, and the proof. Okay? Now pinch yourself and see if you are a constituent of this constitution. Are you part of this constitution? Yeah. Are you a man or a woman? A human, a living human. Are you part of this constitution? A part of it. Yeah, we're part of it. 
Now, you are not a party to making this constitution, just a part of it. You are not the creator or the constitutor. You're not the former or the author. You are just part of the creation. You had nothing to do with it. The Constitution, informed by the Word of God. Can you be a partaker of this Constitution? A partaker is one who takes a part. He is not part of it. He holds or bears a part. No. You cannot be a partaker of God's Constitution. You can't take part of it. You are part of it. You have no choice. So you're not a partaker of the real Constitution. You're a part of it. You have no choice. You can't choose to be who or what you are. That is an insane delusional thought. Now remember, you can get rid of God if you want. Not a problem. He's only the cause of all this. <laughs> We're looking at the effects. We want and need the facts, evidence, and proof. When you see the part you are holding and bear from the Constitution you made, that you are part of, a partaker of, you're going to laugh. It's really funny. You will see some of it in this program, and you're going to see the rest of it in the next program. This is going to be a rather long program, so I hope you got a coffee with you or tea or something. Now, if you are real and were created as the image of God, just the image, can you imagine how real God is? God says, you were created in my image. You're just an image. If I look in the mirror and I see an image, there has to be something there or there can't be an image. So God is real, there's no doubt about that. So that is how things ought to be in order to be constitutionally lawful, as set, fixed, and established. This is the Constitution, the law, your state of being. Fact. Now everything is programmed in this constitution except for man. The earth revolves, the gravity keeps things from flying off into space, swallows will build their mud nests, the water tides rise and fall. All these things are beyond our control. We can't do anything about those things. But we are different. We are special. Only we have the likeness of God. And I'm sure you can just a second, see the resemblance. A second, you gotta look a little holy. God says, I am holy, you be holy. Be the you be holy because I am holy. So here's a holy look. I like that, eh? So you can see the resemblance. So what are we gonna do as part of this constitution? Well, this is what this is what a stylized thing of God's constitution is, right? Sky, birds, bees, flowers in the trees, uh, moon, planets, the whole universe. There's God. This is just the earth, which is just part of his creation. And, of course, he created man on the sixth day, male and female. And the males and females get together as one married and they more kids. And, and the population just increases on the world. So we have a constitution. We have one family. This is all one family. They're all related. They all come from God. So you all have royal descendancy, don't you? Hmm. That's why you should be obeying the royal law instead of the common law. Everyone thinks common law is the law of God. I'll explain that later, too. It's not. One family, one father. These are all sons. This is why we say we're all children of the Father. We're all born of God. This is, this is where it came forth. This is where everyone comes forth from. We're all in his likeness. Of course, we're in the likeness of our parents, but all the way back, man is the likeness of God. Um... God is king, judge, and lawgiver. We have a government. God's a government. And, of course, we have a one-world order. When things, oh, one-world order is bad. Well, it is. If, if people are making a one-world order at the insistence or influence of Satan, but it's not a bad thing if God, who has infinite knowledge and wisdom and who is the owner and the creator of everything, has a one-world order, one-world order would be fantastic. And this is reality, natural and true. Like I said, Go outside and have a look. Tell me this is not real, this is not natural, and this is not true. Everything there is true. It's reality. Where it came from? Fine. Just forget that for now. It doesn't matter. Okay? <laughs> so, um, 
what did I write here? Yeah, so here we are. So in this scenario, out of one, we have become many. And this is natural. This is real. This is true. Uh, we have grandparents. We have great-grandparents. There's children, grandchildren. Just look at your family reunion, right? You have here, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And God is the king. We're all of royal descent, and we're all of one bloodline. Did you know that? We're all of one blood. God even says in the scripture, all people are of one blood. And what do we say? Oh, no, this bloodline, that bloodline, you know, race, this race, that race. This is all evolutionary thinking. It's not true at all. We are all one family. All one progenitor. One common, right? Um, now, as new members come in, older ones die away. So this is like a pyramid scheme, isn't it? Right? More and more people down here, and the old ones keep dying off at the top. I thought a pyramid scheme was illegal. Hmm. God runs a pyramid scheme. Can you imagine that? Um, and of course, if there is a creator God, then we have a one world order under God. So now we'll go to the second diagram. Now, the one on the left we've already realized is reality. Okay, forget about the cause, but it's reality. This is what you see. Okay, can't deny that. If you deny that, you're just stupid, stubborn, whatever. Now, here we have no creator God on the right side. We reject God. So, what do we have? Well, we still have this part, the reality part, but we don't have God. Okay, so we just take that and that's over here. Um, we just can't accept God. So, but now we have a problem, so what do we do? Well, first of all, we don't know what's right and wrong because we don't have a one world order from an infinite wisdom source. So we end up having uh, no God, no law, no rules, just chaos. So what does the absence of God create? Well, it creates chaos. Okay, maybe we can solve it, but the point is it causes chaos. Anything can and will happen now. We don't know if it's things are going to end up good or bad, whatever we decide. So there's where the saying comes from, there but for the grace of God go we. And this is the tactic being used today for today's world view, our existence, which is evolution. Different tactics, same results. Same results as the Inquisition or the Crusades, same result as keeping the word of God from man. Today we don't have to keep it from you because people just don't have time to read it, I guess. They're too busy doing whatever, watching TV, I guess. Um, so before the beginning, there was no supreme being here, no God, there was nothing. Then at the beginning, there was something. We don't know when the beginning was. And that's something, but source and cause unknown. Something just appeared and it evolved, and we just happened to be what we are today. And at some point, our mind evolved where we said, hey, Let's become civilized. Let's stop dragging our wife around by the hair and living in caves and all the stuff you're told, right? Let's uh, become civilized. Well, this is racketeering. See, creating the problem and providing the solution. By rejecting God, we're creating a problem. But there was no problem before you rejected God. We had laws and a world order. All pain and suffering in the world is created by rejecting God. By rejecting God, everyone now is a law unto themselves. The biggest and the strongest will survive. We are all equal. Isn't it funny? Who's got all the money in the world? Little dweeb, anemic um, type of nerdy people, right? And the big, strong people are the servants of them. So you see how evil all this stuff about law and medicine and uh, finances and banking and all that kind of stuff is? In the real world, if we, had, if we hadn't created our civilization and stuff, all these little weak, whatever, gone, right? So what's going on there? So we have to make some kind of deal amongst ourselves. So we're all standing around here with smirks on our face, right? No God, what are we going to do now? So we got to make a deal amongst ourselves or we'll end up killing each other. So what did man come up with? We need protection from each other. We need rules. So again, on the left we had law and order. On the right, we don't. On the left, out of one, we were many. 
became many. And man decided they need a God, so instead of out of one we are many, we will out of many become a one. So we're creating the one, which is the God. See what we do? Okay. So here's what the world looks today. Instead of a billion families on earth, all related in one family, we only have 192 families or around that. That's it. These are countries, nations, sovereigns, fathers, gods, 192 different lawgivers, legal systems. That's it. Out of many we are one, out of many we are one, out of many we are one, out of many we are one. Right. Here, all these people obey the law of the one sovereign. In here, they all obey the law of the one sovereign. But these don't all obey each other. Oh, no. No, no. These are territories, and they defend. They fight like hell. You've heard of war, haven't you? Millions and millions of people. Well, that's what this is all about. Just killing each other, right? Taking territories and, and stuff like that. In Exodus 11, God says... And they said one to another, they're all standing around, right? And they said one to another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had slime for mortar, and they said, go to, let us build a city, a country, and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, a name, a nation, a country, a family, a family name, lest we be scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people has become one. They has become one. And they all have one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. They can't be controlled. They can't, that's what restrained means. They can't be controlled. They can't be governed. So nothing will be restrained from them, which they imagine to do. So this thing is an imagination thing. We're imagining it, right? So let us form a country. Let us make a constitution. Let us create our own state of being. Now read your country's constitution. What is it? It basically creates a God, a father, a government, a new state of being. Isaiah 33. For the Lord God is our judge. The Lord God is our lawgiver. And the Lord is our king. God is our government. Judge, judicial system, lawgiver, legislative branch, king, executive branch. That's what we do. Okay, we create our own God. King, judge, lawgiver, all three branches of government. The God of your country is your country, the people as one. You do not obey God's law, you obey American law, Canadian law, Egyptian law, and German law. Each of 192 is a family, is a sovereign, is a God. So this is the way it works. So in real life, we have God making us, and out of one, we are many. And we can see that plainly. This is reality. Right? This is what goes on in the world. More and more people and so forth. If we have no lawgiver, no God, we have to make a God, a lawgiver. We have to make a God. So out of many, we are one. So out of many, we are one. And why do we have to make a God, a lawgiver? To protect our life, liberty, property. This is mammon again. To protect what we think is ours. It's not ours. Okay? That's where we make a fatal mistake. So in other words, out of many, we are one. Well, how does the one come about? Well, we give birth to it. It's our image. We make it. In our likeness. Okay? We're up here. So instead of us being made in the likeness of God, we have God being made in our likeness. Now who's higher, a God or a God maker? We create the Constitution, therefore we are God. Next problem, we are higher than God. No problem. We agree to give to God everything, our life, our property, our fortunes, and our honor. All power is given to the God we make. And I mean all power. You know what that means? It means everything. People wonder why they can't do this or that, right? So we do a complete invert 
Right? And this is why everything's grassroots. Power's supposed to come from the top down. Not in your society, not in your legal system. Oh no, it goes from the bottom up. Duh. But you see, in reality, it can't. Well, we're tricked into doing this, thinking we're so smart. We're deceiving ourselves. And now the guy above you goes, ha uh ha, -huh, I got more power. And you agreed to it, and you've taken the benefits, and you're involved in this. And now it's your will. It's a promise. I can demand it. You're going to obey. That's it. The God we make is above us now, and we are all its subjects. Our made-up God is our Father, and we are the sons. Now, isn't that something? So all these many here come out of that one. And what was that one? That one there was the image of all these. It's an image of an image. You ever heard of someone making their own father? We make our own father, right? We make our own father, and then we're born from it. Are you nuts? Are you retarded? Are you insane? I mean, this is beyond... There's, there's got to be a better word than retarded, insane, stupid, incompetent. There's got to be a better word for it to fit this thing. Can you make your father and then go, oh, I'm born from him? Something you just made? It's like going back in time. It's, it's retarded. You can't do that. It's, it's all in your head. Stupid. And where does the power come from? The grassroots. The power is handed up instead of coming down. So you see everything's just backwards. So let's have a closer look at the two constitutions, your state of being. The first one is God's constitution, or God's family. Here God is the author. He creates his constitution. This is the word of God. He owns his creation. He is king, judge, and lawgiver. You have heaven and earth. You've got birds and bees and flowers and the trees, the sun, moon, and stars. You have mankind. You have everything there is. This is reality, and this is natural, and this is true. You are part of this family. You are living and you are real. Here is a man-made constitution. This is a new family. You see here, out of many we are one. And it's the one that creates this one. Okay, image, born of. So, man creates this constitution. Man is the author of this. How do you create your own constitution? Can you just create your own being, your own constitution, what you are? Of course you can't. It's nutty. Um, this is the word of man. Man owns this creation. When you see what they own in the end, they own nothing. Okay, it's funny. It's really funny. They claim stuff, steal stuff, but they don't own anything. So man owns this creation. Here man is king, judge, and lawgiver. But what's missing here is the God. So out of many, we are one, right? And the one will be our God. This is why you have it on Americans just, just flaunting everyone's face. They couldn't care less. They are the freest from God on earth. They're the furthest removed from God, Americans, okay? E pluribus unum. Out of many, we are one. It's on all your American money, right? One, 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 one. So how are you going to become one? How are you going to become this one? And then, of course, you take on the identity of this one, which makes you an American. This is, we'll learn this in the next program. You take the image of this, right? It's called a graven image, which is very bad, very bad. Can't do that. So how are a whole bunch of people get together and become one? You see, look at reality. I told you, you, you can't understand any of this stuff unless you look at reality. You have to see the original. You have to see the original creation. And of course, people nowadays are starting to wake up to all this and they're going, this is nuts. This is stupid. This is, of course, it's all stupid and nuts. But you got to keep looking at the original to see how much of a forgery a forgery is. Or you can't see it's a forgery. Okay? Very important we do that. So how do all the people join together to become one? Oh, I know. We'll all hold hands. All hold hands. Everybody hold hands. Okay, look, we're all one. We're all joined as one. Right? But if somebody lets go, then you're not one uh, uh, part of the one anymore. Oh, I got an idea. Let's all pile on top of each other. That's a big pile, right? 
No, that won't work because you'll squish the ones on the bottom. So you can't become that way. Um, how else can we become one? Uh, oh, I know. Let's all have the same name. Yeah, well, it's like a club. We'll form a group, right? We'll call ourselves the Hells Angels. Hells Angels. That's a good name, eh? That's an oxymoron, too. Um, so it's like a club. And we'll all have the same last name. All these ones here, they'll all be Americans, or they'll all be Canadians, or they'll all be... See, see how this works? So your, your country name is a family name. It's a surname. It's your last name. This is how your identity is done. This is uh, your personal identity. You all have the same identity, same father, and you're all sons of the same father. Um, but you see, now you know you can't be part of this. Here you're part of it. Here we are a partaker. So you're taking part in this. Something you have to have and hold because in reality you're not it. It's not natural, it's not true. So you have to hold it. And we'll see this later. How you hold your identity rather than be your identity, okay? Um, so you are a member in name only, not in fact. Remember, courts only deal in facts, just a facts, ma'am. So something goes on here that makes this a fact. Maybe. <laughs> um, so here, we, we are the author. We bring into being by the word of man. We create a constitution, except our words do not constitute anything. Nothing comes into being by our words. Nothing. In fact, your new state of being comes from something you just made. How can I be made from something I just made? I'm going to go through this again. Out of many, we become one, right? Here, one, and then we become made from this one here. You can't make your maker. I mean, wake up. I don't know how more emphatic to say this. You can't make your maker. Go ahead and make your mom and dad. Go ahead. You can't do it. It's impossible, and that's what we're doing here, okay? I mean, it's beyond nutty. Now look at, out of many, we are one. Your new state of being is one, this is, this is it in writing. Your new state of being is one of the many, out of the one that was made by the many. <laughs> we are insane. You are descended from something you made. Have you completely lost your grip on all reality? You cannot make your maker. Stupid. You can't make your own father. You see, everything is backwards, upside down, goes back in time. You can't create where, where, what you came from. You see, we refuse to believe that God made us, but we have the ability to make God. We are higher and more powerful than even God. We do what God cannot even do. It's all magic, witchcraft, necromancy, sorcery, enchanters, familiar spirits, all against the law. It's all just an illusion. It's more than a miracle. It's magic, the black arts. It's done with images. And we'll learn how that's done in the next program. Um, oh, so yeah, again, I wrote down here. So here we are, out of many, we are one, out of Oh, no, sorry. Out of one we are many. Here we are out of many we are one. Here in God we live and move and have our being. This is the essence of your existence. Everyone here is born of God. Okay? This is the, the common progenitor. Everyone is born of God. Here, out of many we are one. So I'll take Canada as one of the sovereign nations. In Canada, we live and move and have our being. And that's why they ask you, where are you born? Well, I was born in Canada. No, you weren't. You had to join it. You, you were adopted. We'll get to this later, too, when I explain the full concept of the person. You weren't born in Canada, okay? Until you're registered and you say, I was born in Canada, you don't even exist. Not in the legal system. Of course, you exist in reality, natural and true, but you don't exist in this nonsense, this game stuff that's all unlawful and you're not allowed to do. So we have the ability to write a constitution, not make a constitution. Our constitution is just on paper. The U.S. Supreme Court calls it a living document. I'll call the Supreme Court judge a 
dead idiot. I, a living document? What are you talking about, a living document? Yeah, a living graven image. No, we give it life. It's not living. We personify it. We give our body and life to it, not the other way around. Our Constitution is just a plan on paper. Before you wrote this Constitution, the country never existed, and if you dissolve your Constitution tomorrow, everything that is real, natural, and true is still here. And the beings of this Constitutional are just fictional beings. They do not exist. They only exist on paper, documents, and on forms completed by you to give formal existence. In form, not in substance. We act as the constituents of this Constitution, which is nothing. Now, man's Constitution didn't create any land. I'll go back to your picture. Didn't create any land, water, birds, or bees, or even man. No problem. We just claim God's Constitution claim a territory and defend it like an animal. So what did we create that we can rule over and govern? In reality and truth, nothing. We rule over nothing. It's all just in your imagination, your head. You can only lawfully rule over what you made. That's the rule of law. So we rule over our fictional characters by assuming their identity. We personify it. We give our body and life to it. And we appear as it. We appear in person. We appear to be driving in person. Everything we do is only appear like. Next program, we're going to show you all that too. It has to do with the face and stuff, okay? Your appearance. So what's in a man-made constitution? Nothing. Nobody and nothing. Everything there is, it was in God's constitution. Let's get real here. Everything is in God's constitution. Don't want to believe in God? Don't! Couldn't care less. But the reality is, is everything is in that part, not in this part. This is all nonsense. This is all fiction. This is not true. So like I said, you can get rid of God. Don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. Look at the facts, evidence, and proof. Look at the effect of the cause. You don't know the cause, you don't accept the cause, you can't understand the cause, fine, don't. But look at the facts, evidence, and proof, and then look what we're doing. We're not even done with what we're doing yet. Wait till you see everything we do. At the end, you're going to go, I must have lost my mind. So... Everything is in God's constitution. Everything. In the beginning, sorry, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And without the Word, nothing is made that is made. So without God, nothing exists. Okay? A man made constitution is just a paper God, a paper fiction. The only evidence of the Constitution you have been living is on paper. Your imagination is not evidence. Okay? It's not evidence. Man's Constitution is just a plan on paper, a scheme to seize God's Constitution and make it their own. There's not even a man in this one. It's all fiction. We have to assume the role of each fi fictional character in our own man-made constitution. We assume the office of the president. We assume the role of a judge. See, assume means, I don't know what the word is. assume means. Assume means unjust. That's what it means. Or to take for granted, which is an oxymoron again. We have to take a part, a role, a character, and play the part. Think for it, speak for it, act for it, appear as it. Nothing is ever what it appears to be. I don't appear to be here. I am here. Appear is something different. Thou art not what thou seemst. These are William Shakespeare sayings again. Then people would say, well, God is just imaginary. God has no state of being. Really? <laughs> Go outside and have a look. What represents God? Then have a look in the mirror at what represents you. Hmm? And that's why I told you in the confusion of words or voice program that there are laws that govern images that you're not aware of. Law, that which is laid down, set, and established, who constituted the law? God did. The Constitution. 
and this is what it is. We and everything there is is present because of God's will. If it was not his will to create all this, it wouldn't be here. We are part of the law, part of the Constitution. We are part of God's works, part of the creation, part of the land, part of the Word of God, because all things were made by the Word of God. The real Constitution is the essence of our being. And when we were formed of the dust of the earth, the, the Word of God was made flesh. And then God breathed life into it and made it the living Word of God, a soul. And what do we do? We reconstitute the law, the land, the Constitution with a new form on paper, a new state of being, a new existence in our likeness. But it's just an image, just a likeness. We have, we have to give it life. Because we're to God here now, you see, the life giver. We give it life and body. We personify it. You have to choose to be it. You have to say, I am American. This is my identity, which of course is a relationship. And we'll see, excuse me, that, uh, that this is a fictional relationship. It's not a real relationship. You are part of this constitution. Just the likeness of, sorry. You are part of this constitution in name only, not in fact. Just Everyone's been looking for this little piece of information when you understand how important this is. You do not own America or Canada. Canada owns you. But in name only, not in fact. Remember that drawing? God owns his creation. Well, this one that you guys all became one owns its creation. Right? So, it's a game being played. So you're owned by the country you live in because of the illusion. But only in name. Not in fact, not in reality, okay? It can only appear as. Um, and Canada was given birth by the people as one. Canada is the image of the people. Canada is the image of the people. America is the image of the people. Spain is the image of the people. Germany is the image of the people. Iran is the image of the people. Okay, that's what a country is. So the illusion we live in our party to is so normal we cannot see it. I mean, who would have ever thought your country is against the law of God, eh? It's been going on from the beginning. We are not part of it. We are only a partaker of it. We have to take a part of it. And you can't fully see this unless you know the real law, the real constitution and your real being. And only by learning the scripture can you see that it all transgresses the law, that which was laid down and established during the creation. God says, God says, I change not. I am the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God has the same state of being and so do you. It's just your imagination. That is why all these things are fictions of law, fictions of the real Constitution. The law of the Constitution, your state of being, cannot change either. It remains the same, immutable. We too have the same state of being, same law and Constitution. Reconstituting everything with a new identity is just in your head and it is stealing. It has to do with the word relations. And we will learn how we do that in the next program. Now, you can tear up your constitution tomorrow. You know, your country's constitution, everyone wants to defend. and See, things are done so that you'll defend something that you're not even supposed to have. This is it's genius how all this stuff is done. You can tear up your constitution tomorrow. Nothing vanishes except what is in your head. Your evil imagination. That's what will vanish after you tear up your constitution. Everything is still here. Get rid of everything you think is American or Canadian, and tomorrow all these things are still here. Get rid of your person, your national identity, and you are still here. Your whole man-made constitution is just an illusion. Get rid of the real constitution, and well, there's nothing. The Canadian constitution came into being in your head through a conspiracy as one in 1867. The American in 1776. Before that, there were no Canadian trees. They were God's trees. There was no Canadian man, just God's man. There was no American man, just God's man. Created in his likeness, his image. 
The first time man used their evil imaginations, God destroyed all life from the earth except for those who found favor with God. He says, those that were just. Noah was just, was a just man in his generations. Just means um, just. See this pencil? This is just a pencil. I take a piece of gum, stick it to the side. It's not just a pencil anymore. So when you create images, facial, uh, mask, right, personification, anything that transgresses the law, the Constitution, is unjust. Okay? So that's what the word just means. So Noah was just, and that's why he was spared. He found favor with God. And right after the flood, man started doing it again. And let me read this again. And the Lord came down to the city and the tower which the children of men builded. See, they're making their own constitution. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. See, God knows you can't really change your state of being, your constitution. So we'll see when we get to the second commandment. That's not how this is done. It's done through here. Um, your written constitution is not a living constitution. We have to live this constitution and give it life. We have to assume, take the place of it, and represent it. We have to personify it. And this is all witchcraft and necromancy. This is giving life to the dead. A man-written constitution is nothing. It's just magic words, and people act on it. Think for it, speak for it, and act for it. And, of course, appear for and as it. They personify it. They give their body to this. We are to use our body and our life to do the will of God. We are to personify God. We are to be God-like, in the likeness of God. We are all God-like by default. We are all God-like, that should be one word, by default, unless we do not keep the commandments. It's true. Instead, we use our body and our life to do our own will through a state of being that is dead, a fiction. Us as gods, as lawgiver, is a fiction of law. We are just a man. Remember, fictions were invented so that we do not have to pretend, but command. We appear as Canadians, we appear in person. It is not your identity. It is an identity we carry with us. We bear it, right? We bear it and we appear as it. Everything is a mockery of God and an imitation of God in his constitution, and I mean everything. We steal everything, and through unlawful conversion, we take jurisdiction over his constitution. In Malachi 3, God asks, will a man rob God? People are going, well, where do we rob you? And God explains it very well. He says, even your whole nation. We reconstituted, everything is represented, represented as ours. We form anew. We remake everything in our likeness, our identity. We are no longer God's man. We are Canada's man. Canada becomes our maker, but only by the form, which we will learn in the next program is a graven image. We belong to Canada or the USA, but only because of a change in relationship we bear unto ourselves, which changes our identity. Acts 17, 24 to 28. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Not in our temples. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from any one of us be not far from any one of us God for in him we live and move and have our being. That's Acts 17, 24 to 28. Probably one of the nicest scriptures there is. Instead, what do we do? For in Canada we live and move and have our being. A lie and complete counterfeit of reality. 
Now, let me give you a different visualization of this, maybe one that you can relate to a little bit easier. See, there's no point in me just showing you something. I'm, I'm explaining these principles of law to you. Once you've got that, the details you'll be able to figure out for yourself. I like my drawing. <laughs> this is a new state of being, new constitution. We create a stage, okay? Here's the stage. And here we are, this is man, real beings, okay? Shakespeare said, to this great stage of fools. It's amazing how Shakespeare keeps coming up in my study on the word of God. Shakespeare understood the illusion we live. He was somehow involved in the translation of scripture. He paraphrases the principles of the word of God throughout his plays. So a stage is a place of action or performance. Look at the statutes of your legislation, all based on acts and duties to perform. A stage player is an actor on the stage, one whose occupation is to represent characters on the stage. The character cannot represent you. No. Your birth certificate cannot represent you. It's just a piece of paper. <coughs> Remember Webster said, a person is primarily a mask used by an actor on stage. So that's what a person is, a human person. We have the stage, the place where you perform. Canada, America, Germany, Spain. The actors, that would be you. We need a script or scripture. The scripture is divided into acts. So our legislature, we write up our acts, our bills. And we perform by and through the character as men, but appear in person. Your national identity. In other words, we appear as the character, a Canadian son. We want to be part of this, so we become a partaker. We take a part. We assume its place. We get up on stage. We assume its place. Its being. Pretend we are. Give it life, voice, act for it, think for it, sing for it. When we sing the anthem, a hymn to your country is um, a hymn to your God. Um, how we act has already been determined by the God of how we are to perform the legislation called Canadian law. The will of the people, our man-made written script. We play the role. It is the role, these guys, that have rights and duties. And we only get those rights and duties if we assume the role. Remember, a man can have more than one role or more than one person in law. This is what the legal system says. Now the word of God, or now the word of man, is made flesh when we personify it. It's a mockery of God and Jesus Christ and the crucifixion and everything else. Just a mockery of the whole thing. Um, now everyone thinks it's real. Each actor has a different role to play depending on your character. Would you like or desire to be a part of this? Take a part, be a partaker. You have to request it to be part of it. You perform, you get credit. Perform wrong, you lose credit. We use credit as money. Who created all this? Who wrote the script? Who authored all this? Who owns all this? Whose imagination is this? Whose words created all this? Who is billed to perform, perform the various acts called a billing to appear? And who assumed the roles of the character of the word of man so that the word was made flesh and given life? Excuse me. We are living the life of a dead being. You see, we're partakers, we assume, we personify, we appear in person. These are the actors. No different than Clint Eastwood appearing as Dirty Harry. The very first thing I wrote on the website, the very first sentence, sums this, uh, everything up. God gave you one face, one identity, the likeness of God, the resemblance of God, your behalf in his name, right? goes on and on. And we make ourselves another. Second commandment forbids this. Everybody thinks it's about, well, anyways, we're going to get to what everyone thinks it is. Doesn't mean that at all. Best scam going to second commandment of God. Um, so our real identity, our real identity is uh, who you are. And your man-made artificial identity you carry in your pocket. Yeah, we carry it in our pockets, just a document. All these things that we think are so real are just fictions of law. Look at the real constitution again. 
Anything that transgresses it or goes beyond the boundaries and limits of how it has been constituted is unconstitutional, unlawful, and sin. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? It's all just witchcraft. It is backwards, upside down, not real, it's not natural, and it's not true. I mean, how much more do you need to know? It's not real, it's not natural, and it's not true. It should be clear by now that the only false god there can be is you. There's only us people here. Not only do we become God, we also of necessity have to make a god. We have to make our maker. Or there will be chaos. <laughs> it is the making of a god that is the idolatry part. In fact, idolatry is the second turn of the three turns in the swindle. The next program takes us to the second commandment of God. It is the key to the worldwide deception that has eluded even the most ardent students of Scripture. It is the key to understanding how you break the law and also the key to finding the solution. Till then, my name is Marcus.